All right, all right, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to AWS reInvent. So good to see everyone's smiling faces. Welcome to today's session, which is revitalizing your security with the AWS security reference architecture, also known as the AWS SRA. The AWS SRA is a free, holistic guide, which is to help you better understand how to use the full complement of AWS security services to deploy these in a multi-account environment. The purpose of the AWS SRA is to help you continuously improve your security posture as your company grows, scales, and innovates. My name is Sarah Curry. I am a security practice manager with AWS Professional Services. I lead a team of security builders, and we implement security, identity, and compliance solutions to accelerate business outcomes for AWS customers around the globe. Johnny? Welcome to reInvent, everyone. My name is Johnny Ray. I am a senior security engineer with AWS Managed Services. If you're unfamiliar with a AWS Managed Services, AMS for short, we are basically a service that partners with customers to help them to operate on the cloud. Sarah? Thanks so much. So what is your goal today? Did you know that there are 2,300 reInvent sessions happening this week in Las Vegas? 2,300. Let that sink in. So thanks for hedging your bet on us this afternoon. To make sure that you're reaching your learning goal with us, what are you trying to learn today? If you're trying to learn how to define your target security architecture, if you're trying to learn how to fast and reliably implement security architecture or drive organizational discussions, then you're in the right place. I also want to set expectations that this is a 200 level talk so we're going to keep it high level and talk about security architecture and make sure that it's approachable to everyone in the room today. So what are we going to be covering? We're going to talk about some common challenges that we saw with our customers and why we built the AWS SRA in the first place. We're also going to cover some of the security foundations for why we built the AWS SRA. And Johnny's going to dive into a customer story of how they had a problem and they solved it with the security reference architecture. We're also going to dive into some of the building blocks and the organizational units for what we looked at with the SRA. And we'll dive into some of the modules for the code repository that you could deploy in your AWS environment. And lastly, Johnny and I created some actionable next steps. So after attending the session, you can take away for one week three months or six months after this session. So what are some common challenges that we've seen with our customers? As we know, whether you're just starting your cloud journey or you're enhancing your security architecture, a lot of different customers have asked, how do you define your security architecture? How do you know what to look at in your industry vertical to know that you're really meeting where you need to be in a secure place and improving your security and posture? Posture. 90% of what we build at AWS is built on customer feedback. And that is no different than the AWS SRA. So when we were looking at all of the different feedback that we're getting from customers, these are the different questions that we were looking at. Another aspect we get a lot, and I'm sure you can relate, is how do we keep up with the latest and greatest new technologies with AWS security services? I'm sure you all can relate being here at AWS reInvent this week. I will even admit myself, working at AWS, I have a hard time keeping up with some of the launches. And I will say that I will probably have about five to 10 new emails in my inbox, probably at the end of this session over the next 40 minutes. So how do you keep up? And we'll go over some mechanisms that we have available today. And how can we implement in a fast and reliable way our own security architecture? We'll talk about infrastructure as code and how you can use some templates such as AWS CloudFormation. And as we know, at AWS, security is our top priority. And security is no longer just the job of security architects and security engineers. 
Security is everyone's job and responsibility, so how do we drive these discussions and make sure that security is approachable and everyone understands governance and the responsibility? And lastly, there are a lot of different AWS security services, and how do the different puzzle pieces fit together? So that's why we built the AWS SRA. And going back to that topic of organizational discussions and the puzzle pieces fitting together, not everyone is going to wake up super excited to talk about security logs like Johnny and I might be, or you might be if you're a security professional. So how do you make security approachable and fun? And one of the ways we like to do that is using real world examples and making it approachable. So are you guys ready to have some fun today? Yes? Okay, I heard some yeses, perfect. All right, let's dive in. So let's talk about securing your castle. I'm pretty sure everyone here can think of some type of story that involves a castle. So think of your favorite story, whether it's nonfiction or fiction that involves a castle. And think about how that story involves defending that castle. And think about all the ways that you would defend that castle and that story. Now, let's take that back to AWS and your architecture. How would you secure your AWS environment? So this is kind of a fun metaphor that we're gonna walk through, and this is a way that you can talk about having the different AWS security services fit together, as well as driving this different organizational conversation around security. So as you can see in our picture here, we have a tall stone wall, so 60 foot wall, maybe you know, 80 meters if you're not from the US, and uh, it's going to be protecting your castle, so it's gonna have that perimeter security. And what could that be similar to? Maybe your AWS network firewall. So again, this could be your first layer of defense for your castle. And we also have our castle guards. So these folks are looking to see who's coming in and out of the castle. Do they belong here? Are they part of our kingdom? Are they bringing messages? What are their purpose? What's their role here? And so for your AWS environment, this could also be AWS identity and access management. And when we're looking at this, what is their role? Do they belong here? What are their permissions? Next, maybe we have a watcher on the wall. And they're looking to see if there's any threats. They're monitoring for their castle to see, you know, is there any type of activity around the castle or inside the castle? And this could be similar to AWS, or sorry, Amazon guard duty. And depending on how you look at it, also monitoring user activity and any types of log history. So also AWS CloudTrail. And lastly, my personal favorite, every castle needs to have their secrets within their kingdom, their treasures, their crown jewels. So you obviously need to protect those with the vault. And in this vault, similar to your AWS environment, this is going to be AWS Secrets Manager that is going to store your credentials and your database. So when we look at this metaphor, I know it can be a little silly or fun, but this is really going to be what's going to stick with people at your organization. It's an easy reference to look back and have fun with it. Uh, even if there are non-security professionals, even non-technical, it's going to be a way to help relate this metaphor and help everyone understand and drive security. And it goes back to that concept of defense in depth and having more robust security, and this is why we built the AWS SRA. Too much light often blinds people. They cannot see the forest for the trees. Many of our customers feel overwhelmed with the amount of options they have when it comes from not even just AWS services, but all of the external options. And so the purpose of the AWS SRA is to provide a holistic guidance that will allow you to see the full picture of your security reference architecture and see the purpose of improving your security posture. And so that is why we built it, again, to see the full picture and to allow you to have that defense in depth. So Johnny, now that we just went over that full castle metaphor, I'm gonna pass it to you so that you can dive into it. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. 
So again, welcome everyone. And one of the things that I wanted to do before we really began was take some time to really explain the purpose of the SRA. And we're gonna do that by discussing the feedback that we've heard from customers, which is that as they've, uh, as they've uh, either migrated to the cloud or if they're new uh, or if they're new to AWS, they consistently say, hey, Johnny, Sarah, there's like 20 plus services. Which one do I need to start with? Where do I begin? This is where the AWS SRA comes in. So let's start with how to use the SRA. First thing you wanna do is define where you want to be. You need to understand where you are today and create that target state. Determine, hey, like you have certain security controls you need to have in place, whether it's for compliance reasons or you have security mandates from leadership. Define what that target state looks like and then determine if, as you go through, you review your uh, existing security controls to determine if they meet those, th that objective. If they don't, that's okay. We give you the option to revise those controls so that you can hopefully meet those requirements. After you've kind of created your plan, uh, you determine where you need to go or where you want to go with your target state, this is where we look at execution. So pretty straightforward, right? Define where you want to be, review what you already have in place, then execute. That's usually where most people stop. But what we want to do next is we want to learn about new AWS uh, security uh, controls that we have and the different tools that we have. And the purpose of learning is to determine if they can maybe fill that gap. After you've had a chance to learn, you gain an understanding, you look for how it can help your business to accelerate faster, and you use this as a chance to drive discussions. So when you're driving discussions with your team, what you want to do is you want to explain to them, going back to that, uh, that original definition, of saying, this is where we are uh, today. We need to get to a different uh, security maturity model. And we can use, uh, whether it's like I say for identity, hey, we can use IAM Access Analyzer to understand where we are. And what I'll do is I'll give you an example to hopefully uh, drive this home for you. So this is where we get to the customer story, going back to that castle. So when you look at the castle, the castle has many elements. And as you can see here, same thing. Like, hey, you know what? Which type of tower do we need for the castle? Should we go with a moat? Should we go with a fence? Should we have a drawbridge? Many, many options. How do you choose? Well. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I'm with the AMS security team, and we had a customer that approached us as they were onboarding to AMS, and one of the things that they called out was that they had hundreds of accounts. And in each account, they had different teams that were operating in the account. So you have application teams, infrastructure operations, DBAs, you have your developers. It just goes on and on, and don't forget about, oh, the, the reporting and uh, business lines. They said, with all the people that had access to the accounts, how do they keep track in a centralized format so they know what's occurring in these accounts? So the first thing that they needed to do, and this is where the AWS SRA comes in, it provides that roadmap. It gives you, in essence, a map of how to implement your security controls so that you can meet your security objectives. So the first thing that they did was they enabled uh, CloudTrail. So CloudTrail basically tracks uh, API actions so you can determine who's doing what. And as they started to mature, they were able to add additional elements such as guard duty so that they can get detective controls, security detective controls. And then the next step after that, uh, to build upon that, they were like, okay, now that we have our security controls in place, hey, do all the people that have access actually need the rights that they have? Are they overly permission, uh, uh, have, have they overly 
uh, permission, the uh, roles that were provided. So with that, they were able to use IAM Access Analyzer to determine if the permissions that were assigned to their users were assigned appropriately, and if not, they were able to scope those down. So they follow a least privileged model. So at a high level, AWS SRA is built upon the AWS Share Responsibility Model. So I'm not gonna to go too far in depth here, this is just an overview. But basically, when we talk about the Share Responsibility Model, there are two things to know for this. First is that AWS is responsible for security of the cloud. That means that we're responsible for securing the data centers, the underlying network infrastructure, as well as the hardware. And on the customer side of the customer responsibility model, the customers are responsible for the applications and configurations of the uh, underlying platform, that they're, uh, the platform that they, they built their applications on. Uh, we also use the AWS well-architected framework and we use the AWS Cloud Adoption Framework. So quickly, I wanted to provide a comparison of the two, just to help you understand the foundation. So when we look at the well-architected framework, at a really high level, what it provides is a guide to design and implement the applications or services that you want to use. On the other side, we have the cloud adoption framework. And when we look at that, this is saying, okay, you know what, uh, we, we give you the well-architected framework so you can design, but now we need to look at uh, how, like uh, we've worked with many customers, and, we've and as we work with these customers, there are certain learnings that we have, certain takeaways. So we use the cloud adoption framework to identify common challenges that customers have had and provide prescriptive guidance to help you overcome those challenges or avoid them altogether. So with that, you say, okay, Johnny, that's great. But I already have the tools I want to use. The AWS SRA is meant to be a framework which means that you have the option, you are empowered to understand, uh, we try to provide you with the knowledge so you can understand why we chose the different options we did for uh, the SRA. And if you say, you know what, that, the one that's called out in the SRA doesn't work for me, that's completely fine. In fact, we encourage you to take out what doesn't work for you and plug in what does and it should still work the same or better than what we could have provided otherwise. So we try to provide you with the flexibility that you need so that you can continue to move fast. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Sarah so we can uh, dive further into the SRA. So looking at the AWS SRA building blocks, we're gonna dive into looking at the AWS security services and how their controls and interactions are built best in a multi-account strategy using the AWS organizations. If you're not familiar with AWS organizations, it's a service that's built mainly looking at management and governance. When we're looking at these guardrails, they're essentially built in a way that's looking at how can you deploy this for a multi-account environment. This is the AWS SRA. I know it is a lot on this slide. I will talk you through it, so bear with me, but please feel free to take a photo. Uh, I also will have a QR code later on in the deck where you can see it better on your phone and on your laptop later. And the AWS SRA, this diagram's illustrating how we've built out this architecture. So again, the AWS security services, you can see them throughout. There's also management and governance services in here as well, as well as networking and content delivery. So going back to that concept of defense in depth, all of these services are working together to again, help provide a more robust, secure architecture for your AWS environment. And we're gonna talk about, again, the security in layers, but we'll come back to this. I'm going to go to another view that I think will help be more digestible. With the security at layers, 
essentially, again, we've talked about with the castle, looking at defense in depth. With the different AWS layers, we can see here that we have AWS organizations, and we've broken it down to have a more structural view. I think this is personally a more digestible view for everyone to see here. And you can see with the AWS uh, layers that we have here, there are about six different layers. So we have the AWS organization, and then broken down into the organizational unit, or OUs, as uh, we call them. And those are essentially logical groupings of accounts. So we'll go through some different ways that you can logically group those. Those could be through cost centers, security tooling, workloads, things like that. And then we also have it broken down into accounts, network and content delivery, and AWS principles and AWS resources. So as you look through these, this is going to be ways that you can look at how you can see top down. So how are we looking at AWS security services that can secure my organization as a whole? All the way down to AWS resources such as, well, how can I securely manage my EC2 instance? Breaking this down, I will go through each layer to help better discuss and again, make this more digestible for each layer. And then we'll also dive in later into the organizational units. And I'll also slow down so everyone can take pictures as we go through. For the organizational units, so at the top level, there's the AWS services and features that are applying governance and control capabilities. So these are different guardrails for being applied at different multiple accounts throughout your AWS organizations. So you can see here we have some different services. I won't go through them all, because um, we, as we've discussed, there's a lot of them. Uh, but some of my personal favorites, so AWS Config, that is a service that is looking at how are you looking at configuration of your different AWS resources? And are they essentially evaluating the configuration of the frameworks of different security frameworks, but also just best practices in general. And are those resources matching those different best practices and guardrails? We're also looking at some of the different AWS security services, such as the, uh, the service control policies, so SCPs. And this is built off of IAM. And this is actually something that you can use for preventive guardrails. And this is one of my personal favorites because you can actually use this and this can go into member accounts where you can actually write these to deny or allow different policies. So for example, in your member accounts, if you wanna make sure that you have Amazon S3 buckets and deny creation of an S3 bucket if it does not have encryption, you can do that. So it's going to allow you to enable more security and use that concept of inheritance. And you can see that there's uh, an asterisk in the diagram, and that's essentially making sure that it's looking at denoting support for organizational uh, aggregation. And we're not gonna dive into this today, but when you look at the AWS SRA prescriptive guidance, there is some information about delegated administration, and so that is an aspect of looking at how can you use different AWS security services to pull in into different member accounts so that you can delegate the administration into that. Diving into the next aspect of the AWS accounts, so there's a lot of different services that you can use. Um, we have already talked a little bit about AWS Secrets Manager, but that's specifically normally used at the account level so that you can give developers and architects permission so that they can look at rotating their own secrets and having access to managing their own credentials and passwords. And so when we're looking at some of these different AWS security services, you can also see down at the bottom, I believe, uh, is AWS IAM Access Analyzer. And this can be configured to generate different findings about different specif specified resources that are essentially accessed by principles outside of an AWS account so that that can help you essentially look at your security and find any types of risk that you might have in your account. We've also pulled in some other AWS security services that are looking at data protection, such as AWS KMS, that's looking at how do you, you know, create and control keys that are used to encrypt your data. And then we're also moving into the next layer, which is the network and content delivery. So as we know, this networking layer is very important as it's focusing on the network compute and content infrastructure. So looking at the fundamental 
component of all of our different workloads and protecting that from uh, any type of vulnerability management with AWS Inspector. And we can also see some of the other aspects we talked about, AWS Network Firewall at the beginning with our Fun Castle metaphor, and AWS Shield. So how do we protect our applications from DDoS attacks? And moving into the last two, so AWS Principles, looking at identity policies and how we can use AWS Security Services to manage IAM roles and permissions, and also AWS Resources, so looking at resource-based policies. And I see some folks taking photos, so I'll stay on that one for a second. Um, again, we already talked about IAM Access Analyzer and AWS Config, but resource-based policies are, they can be attached to a resource and help better manage your permissions there. And these are all in the AWS SRA that you can dive into in these different illustrations that the diagrams are available. And again, this is a free resource that everyone can use. And Johnny will be talking about some different ways that we can essentially implement these in your environment. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. For getting into the architecture, so again, we talked about using this in a multi-account strategy. So with AWS organizations, we use the organizational unit. So again, the OUs. So we're going to now shift what we were just looking at in the diagram with the nested structural view. And we're going to change that view a little bit to look at it from the OU level. So again, we're going to go back to this type of view. And you can see from the OU level, we're, we're now looking at what we were looking at before, but it's a different perspective, essentially. And when we're looking at from this perspective, the OUs, again, are a logical grouping of accounts. Talking through it, the top left is the org management account. And this is going to be what creates all of your different member accounts. And this one's also a very important account because it's also what's going to be where your root access is, and as well as managing different things like the payer accounts. And for the next slide, I'm actually going to take the security services out of it because I think it's a little bit better for reading. So let's go to the next one. And as you can see, so it's broken out into the OU. So again, talking about logical groupings. We have our security grouping, so we have our tooling and log archive, which we'll dive into those. And then we have our OU workloads, so we'll have our application account. And then over to the right, our infrastructure with a network account and shared services. So this is just a basic security reference architecture. So Johnny had talked about, going back to our castle metaphor, if you have a castle that, you know, maybe there's a wall, but you want a moat because your industry requires different regulations, different types of standards, that's totally fine. This is a basic type of foundational aspect. So, for example, some types of customers might have more than one security tooling account. Maybe they would have multiple security tooling. Maybe they would even have security operations account, a forensics account. Uh, it really depends on what makes the most sense for your business, and we totally empower you to change this and customize to what makes sense for you. And as you can see, there is a single AWS organization and the individual organizational units on the side here. Diving into the security tooling accounts, we're going to go through a few of these. We won't go through all of them. Again, the, the prescriptive guidance is about 90 pages, so we won't get through everything today, uh, but it is available for you, and we'll have the QR code at the end. So the security tooling account is dedicated to the operating security services and monitoring the different AWS accounts, automating security alerting and response, and there's a few different security objectives here. So we're making sure that there is a dedicated account to pulling in the different logs so that your security teams can monitor for any types of security findings they have, if there's any type of detections that are uh, odd for your company that aren't you know, out of the normal, so that you would pull in and maintain that traceability. The detection and investigation response are essential parts of your operations to running for your security team, so that's what this account is going to be for. And again, it's maintaining that defense in depth. And going back to our puzzle pieces, so how are these working together? For a quick demonstration of this security tooling, 
we can see that if we're looking at AWS Security Hub, so this is going to be conducting automated security checks that are aligning with different industry and regulatory frameworks. So Security Hub's pulling in different findings from Amazon Macy that's looking at sensitive data, uh, from different findings from Amazon S3. We have different types of findings from Amazon Guard Duty that's, again, looking for threat detection findings and uh, AWS Fire, Firewall Manager, so findings from there. And it's pulling from there. It can send findings to Amazon Detective, which is data visualization that can help with root cause findings. So that's how that's working together. And then it also can work together with AWS Config to pull in findings from there. Meanwhile, AWS Config is working together with AWS Audit Manager to pull in essentially findings to AWS Audit Manager, which can then help a company create audit assessment reports. So I, I also have a customer, like Johnny was telling a customer story, I also have a customer that I work really closely with, and I was working with them in 2020, and they uh, are a healthcare company, so they were working to make sure that they were complying with HIPAA frameworks, and they were using AWS Config, and they loved it, and they had recently implemented AWS Config conformance packs, which were new at the time, and so we were using that, and then for auditing, it was totally a manual process, going in, taking screenshots, we were writing scripts on our own, it was a whole process, and then AWS Audit Manager came out, and it was a great way to essentially pull in AWS Audit Manager to use that and have the services work together. And that's essentially a way that the AWS SRA can be used, again, to use these different diagrams to show how the services can work together to improve your security posture over time. So going back to how we talked about common challenges of keeping up with the different security features so that you can continually save your time and in engineering resources. So going back to how we solved that, um, that common challenge. Next, diving into the log archive. So this, when we go back to our castle metaphor, uh, think of the beautiful libraries and different castles, how we're tracking all of the different history throughout the castles, the books. Um, so this is dedicated to ingesting and archiving all of the different security-related logs and backup, having our immutable storage. So we can see here that um, we have our different centralized logs. Johnny's talked about using AWS CloudTrail, which we will talk about how do we implement that a little bit later. And so, again, we can talk about using different preventive controls and assigning least privileged roles that can be used for encrypting these different logs. So you can see down at the bottom, we have our centralized different AWS security services that are being pulled in by the AWS organization uh, services that are being used to help, again, pull in the different security services with our security layers. And next, looking at the infrastructure OU. So when we get into shared services, and so we're looking at what are our shared services across our AWS environment. And so we're seeing some different aspects of AWS Systems Manager. So there's a lot of different features in AWS Systems Manager that you can use. Um, one of those is to essentially configure and manage Amazon EC2 instances. It can help with OS patching, uh, different features that you can use to help, again, secure your EC2 instances. And then when we think about back to our castle metaphor, maybe you have lots of chefs in the kitchen. Maybe you also have owls and ravens and different types of pigeon messengers. Or with your AWS environment, maybe you have AWS Directory Service or AWS Managed Microsoft AD. So these can be used in your shared services account. Again, the purpose and business outcome of this is that they're all in one account that you can essentially use and allow other types of uh, different types of cost centers to have permissions to these but limit permissions. And they're also in the infrastructure OU, but it's separated out from the network account. So they don't have the same permissions there, but they can essentially inherit some of the same service control policies that I had mentioned before with the preventive controls and guardrails. 
And lastly, going into the workloads OU. So we do have an application account uh, that we're talking about, and we have a very small application here. So just a small EC2 instance with uh, Amazon Aurora database. And uh, we have essentially all the security services in layers here. So again, going back to that defense in depth concept. So we have our AWS systems manager agent deployed on that EC2 instance to, again, protect it. So managing the updates on the EC2 instance with the OS uh, patches, as well as preventing any SSH um, ports opening up on that. And then as we move to the right, you can see that there are other security services uh, that start to also protect this application. So we have our VPC endpoints, and these are services that are sitting on the edge of the VPC, and they essentially help to connect other Amazon services to the VPC without having to use any services like a VPN so that they don't essentially have to transverse on the public internet. And as we move farther to the right, we can see other services. Again, we've talked about AWS Secrets Manager, so rotating secrets, uh, AWS KMS encrypting and creating and controlling keys. So that's, again, allowing our developers and architects to control their uh, different credentials and encryption at the application level. But as we move farthest to the right, that, again, is going to be our centralized security coming in from our top-down level with AWS organizations. And that's essentially with the AWS SRA, how we want to have that inheritance come down from our nested security layers that we looked at earlier. And so when we look at the AWS SRA and all of those different diagrams that we looked at, going back to the common challenges, how are some fast and reliable ways that we can implement? Because I know that was kind of a lot to look through. It can feel overwhelming. So Johnny is going to talk about how can we use different types of mechanisms, such as infrastructure as code, to use the AWS SRA code repository to implement this within our AWS environments. OK, thank you, Sarah. So we're going to take a look at the AWS SRA code repository, as Sarah just mentioned. And the thing to keep in mind with this is that this is infrastructure as code. So if we've so what that means is that we've created these scripts and automations on your behalf so that you can deploy a solution in a standardized format that also follows best practices. So there are a few things that I wanted to uh, discuss before we dive into the uh, code example. So I just provide some of the features that are provided. So first off, we had an architecture diagram. I don't know about you all, but when it comes to learning about a new product or feature, uh, I don't want to read a wall of text. I want to be able to see a visual diagram of how everything works together, how the data flows. And I can use that to, do, to uh, build up my design. It also includes resource descriptors and the implementation guide. So you can clearly de uh, determine what components are included with the SRA. So again, as we mentioned before, you are empowered to make changes. You can substitute things out, or replace it with something that works best for you. And for the implementation guide, it provides a, a, a guide on how to implement for the AWS native services, but you can absolutely replace that with your chosen solution. You also have lease permissions. Whoops, there. Not sure what happened there. Uh, but for uh, all the models, Again, as I mentioned before, since this infrastructure is code, it is, uh, it is implemented with uh, lease permissions. So you, uh, keep, you have separation of uh, permissions. And it also uses configuration logic as well, so that if you already have a service implemented in your account, uh, or if you don't, it, they have some, some basic logic built in to be able to add those features or services if you don't have it. Uh, next is you have a KMS script. So with the AMS KMS, that's the uh, key management system. It allows you to encrypt your data at rest and in motion. And then finally, especially for the operations folks, uh, we have cleanup scripts. I'm sure everyone know what it's like to have some uh, you know, old artifact that may have been deployed or tested years ago and no one knows what it is. Uh, the cleanup scripts will remove that for you. 
So with that, we have the SRA code example solution. So I want to go over a few things here. So first is that uh, within AWS organizations, the, the example that we're going to discuss is the AWS wide cloud trail. But there are also other options as well. So uh, as Sarah mentioned before, we have uh, AWS organization accounts where you can delegate your admin access. So if you have a security team, you have an audit team, uh, if you have a compliance team, and those are separate functions, you can absolutely give them the access that they need without having, give, without having to give them full administrative access to every account. And there are also some things you can do by default for the child accounts of the organization. So with that, you have the, uh, as, as Sarah mentioned before, the S3 public access block. If you want, if, if there's no good, uh, if there's not a good business reason to allow S3 public access, then by default, you can have that denied. And that works really well from a security standpoint because if someone needs that access, they will have to meet with the security team first to explain that business justification and make sure it's implemented correctly. So this is also a great inspection mechanism that you can use for your accounts. So there are some prerequisites that you should be aware of before you use AWS SRA. So we've already mentioned before that you, uh, yeah, we have AWS organizations. Uh, but you would also want to deploy uh, AWS Control Tower if you haven't used that before. And uh, we also have some CloudFormation scripts, so there are permissions that you'll need to enable to be able to use CloudFormation. If you need additional information, as you can see, there are URLs here. And uh, we also have this in uh, uh, a code. Oh, goodness, I've drawn the blank on what it's called. <laughs> uh, but, uh, we also, but we have additional information that you can see after uh, that will provide you a link so that you can uh, look at it as well. So if you were to implement the AWS SRA, the first step is you need to set up the environment. So within that, you have AWS Control Plane uh, Tower, and you also have a customizations pipeline. And, that cu and those customizations basically allow you to enter criteria that meet your requirements. Uh, next, uh, you'll want to clone the GitHub repository. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you go to the GitHub, clone, and then you can import the code into your environment. So you'll want to package and stage the code. A uh, big thing for this is uh, you'll want to uh, verify that the Lambda permissions has the, uh, has the correct access so they can deploy the infrastructure as needed. And then you'll want to update and stage the configuration files. So after you've, after you've staged the code, uh, test it out, verify that it works, you use this as an opportunity to uh, update the code uh, for your production environment. Finally, trigger the pipeline, and you're in production. All of this is, uh, we set this up in an automated format so that you can deploy this quickly, you can test quickly, and, and verify it works for you, and you can do it at minimal cost. So with that, well, as you recall from the early example, uh, when I mentioned that we had a, uh, for, the ADA, for the customer I've worked with before, so that they wanted to deploy CloudTrail into hundreds of accounts. And they need to do that in a centralized format. So there's a few things that we want to call out here. So on box one, we had the organization management account. And there are certain things such as cloud formation, which basically calls that Lambda function I mentioned before. And what that does is it, it, uh, it creates a cloud trail for you. And it also creates a CloudWatch cl uh, log group. So that goes back to what we were uh, talking about before for the delegated admin access. That if you had a dedicated, if you have a security account or if you have an audit account, you can also restrict access to those CloudWatch law groups. Uh, and this is where you see in step uh, for box two, the audit account, that's for your security team. And then for box three, you have that archivist account. So going back to that castle metaphor, if you have your, uh, if you have separate rooms where maybe that's like the nerve center of your command center, 
you can, you can, you can basically separate that inf information, compartmentalize it out so that uh, the, only the teams with a business justification has access to that data. So with that, there are some key takeaways that Sarah mentioned earlier that we would like for you to walk away with. And I'll hand it back to her to discuss those. All right, so with the AWS SRA, we're gonna provide some QR codes. And remember, it is free, so you can access it and go ahead and use it today to make sure that you are improving your security posture within your AWS environment. So some key takeaways for this talk, with using the AWS SRA, you're going to be able to better define your target security state for your architecture. You're also gonna be able to review and revise the designs and capabilities you've already implemented. So something that's really great, and it actually was implemented two weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving, you can now go in and take the diagrams and modify them. So if you, you know, are already using some of these different security services and you wanna add in other services that maybe aren't on the diagram, you can do that and feel free to, so that you can make sure that you can go ahead and implement that. Like Johnny just showed with the code repository, I saw some of you were taking photos, so if we need to go back and uh, go back and if anyone needs to take more photos, we can do that after the session. Uh, you can use AWS CloudFormation and the AWS SRA modules to again, easily and reliably use the uh, AWS CloudFormation modules to implement your security architecture. And you're at AWS reInvent, so you clearly care about learning, which we love. So learning more about the new security features and capabilities and understanding cloud security generally. Again, using fun real life metaphors are a really good way to engage people and helping them to really engage in how to help use security to reach your business outcomes. And again, driving discussions of organizational responsibilities for security. So these are really the key takeaways that we want you to drive. And go ahead and keep those phones out because we do have some homework for you. So the next slide is going to be our roadmap that we want you to take home. So for the next one week, three months, and six months after this talk, there, here's some homework. Uh, so one week after this talk, you should go back to your team and assess your organization's current security architecture. What does it look like? What services are you using? How does it match up with the AWS SRA? Again, back to the moat reference. You can do things differently, that's totally fine. But are there gaps there? Also look at learning about the AWS security services and features. There are going to be some really cool, exciting launches this week. Johnny and I are super excited about it, so keep an eye out. And are these new services going to be a fit for your organization and what you're looking to do in 2023 and beyond? In the next three months, identify one to two uh, security improvements. Maybe they can be small things. Maybe they can be some really big ideas that you can do in the future that are going to be uh, really great ways to accelerate your organization. Host a lunch and learn. So how can you help your peers who maybe don't understand security very well, help them to understand security and how it can accelerate your business outcomes? And then within the next six months, again, continue to earn trust and help them understand the importance of cloud security and that it can be fun. And you can use the castle reference. We're totally fine with that. Uh, and then lastly, establish a mechanism to validate your security architecture as major changes happen within your AWS environment. Obviously, technology is ever evolving, so it's great to have mechanisms to catch big major changes. Here are the QR codes, so again, feel free to take a photo of both sides. The left side is the prescriptive guidance, so these are going to have the diagrams that we went through of the nested view, as well as the OU diagrams, and then the right side is going to be the AWS SRA code repository that Johnny went through. And then you also might see on your seats, there's uh, QR codes, we got these printed out a little last minute, but there, if you're already a user of the AWS SRA, we love customer feedback, 
and we would love your feedback on how we can continue to improve and iterate for 2023 and beyond. I'll let everyone finish taking their photos so I can't see people very well. So in conclusion, we want to make sure that we empower you to use the AWS SRA to continue to improve your security posture and secure your castle, as well as be a guardian for your AWS environment for today and the future of tomorrow. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week at reInvent.